Good day, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of the HJC podcast, powered by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Today, we're joined by Monday's writer, Sean. How's it going, Sean? Doing well. Up late on the East Coast. All right. Ben, Tuesday's writer. How's it going, Ben? Good. Glad to be back. And Justin, Thursday's writer. Not too bad. Uh, pleasure as always. All right. And I'm Ryan, your blog admin, your Saturday writer, whatever you want to call me. Uh, coming up today, of course, we're going to talk about the NHL 100 Classic Jerseys. That's a terrible name for a game. That didn't even roll off the tongue. That's awful. And we're also going to talk about the 2018 Stadium Series logos. Of course, we're going to play Fake or Authentic. We got our throwback throwdown and a special interview that I conducted with Jeff from the design department at Athletic Knit. So it's a great show. And let's start it off with the NHL 100 Classic Jerseys. And let's talk about the road team, Montreal. Uh, Justin, you saw this white jersey. What are your thoughts on it initially? Yeah, I mean, as I talked about in my Thursday post, um, it's 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 cool to see the silver pull over again, but I'm just not a fan of the hem and the arm stripe disassociation. But I mean, that's something you get on a Montreal jersey, so it happens. And Ben, when you saw the jersey, what what'd you think of the Montreal white jersey? Yeah, I was disappointed with this one. On my grading scale, I give it a C minus. Um, I do like that it's simplistic. I think it works for Montreal and not for Ottawa, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, I like how they don't try to overpower it with color. It's a nice stormtrooper look. Um, I don't think that I, I don't like that inclusion of silver at all. It, it just doesn't make sense, especially in the logo. I mean, it's almost sacrilege to do to an original six team. It seems to be the theme of the game, but maybe a theme they should have left out. Sean, uh, the Montreal jersey. What are you thinking? In theory, this is Montreal's first original design since 1946, I think. And I really, I really like this jersey. It is a little plain with the white, but I really like this shade of blue that they've used on this logo with the silver. I think that looks very nice. And had they included a yoke and maybe a little more red, we'd have something close to, um, close to perfect as Montreal could have had, considering how good uh, their jerseys tend to be. Now, I was thinking that maybe they would go with. Um design similar to what they wore in the winter classic and it was clear there was going to be silver trim uh just from the logos that we saw on the t-shirts before the jersey reveal but i thought maybe they'd go in that direction adding some silver trim to uh, a jersey similar to the winter classic um justin was the, the jersey too plain for you maybe some changes that you would have made to the montreal jersey and maybe something that you would have kept about it yeah, I mean, it's like like we talked about. It's a little, it's a little boring. It's a little stormtrooper. I, something I, would, I just realized after looking at them here is neither of them seem to have the NHL 100 Classic logo on there anywhere. So I think just something as simple as throwing that on one of the shoulders would really give it something up top, so it's not bare like you see with Nashville's current Adidas home too. There's just kind of that one color throughout the throughout the whole scope of the jersey, which is kind of bothersome. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see the patch on a shoulder. Perhaps they're not ready or something like that. Yeah, could be. Ben, maybe some additions or, or what you would do with this jersey or, or something positive maybe that came out of this jersey. Something positive. I like how they committed to that simplistic look. Like I said, the Stormtrooper. Um, unlike what they their uh, current white jersey, they have that red yoke. I think it's uh, distracting from the rest of the design. Um, I think it's, I mean, like... You know, when I write on the blog, like one of the first things I look for is consistency. Like, what is the theme? What's the pattern? Like, did the artist stick to it? And I, I think that's uh, what Montreal does best here uh, with this look. Sean, something you would change about the jersey? I have to see what the gear looks like, and I, I think that what we're seeing now is Adidas is going to focus now more so, and we see it with Nashville is the jersey as a whole. Uh, sorry, the, the kit as a whole, the jersey just being part of it, and the if you throw a pair of jeans on the jersey, that being secondary. That being said, I mentioned the red yoke. The logo is a good point. Other than that, I think that maybe the uh, adding some red to the numbers. Yeah, that would be something as simple as that to add some color to the arms. Okay. Yeah, the silver really fades into the white there and doesn't really do a heck of a lot. It does, and definitely from a distance. Like if you're up in the nosebleeds for this outdoor game, you're not going to see a thing. No, and but again, these outdoor games are kind of a 
made for TV event. You know, you want to lo- uh, generate money locally, and that's what these games are supposed to do. But once the game's on, it's kind of a made for TV event. Uh, let's switch over to Ottawa. Uh, coming out with the red jersey, horizontal stripes, the O logo or the zero logo. <coughs> And my biggest gripe with this one is they are claiming the Stanley Cup championships of the old Ottawa Senators franchise, which means they should also be claiming the longest Stanley Cup drought in the NHL. (laughs) (laughs) Sean, what'd you see from uh, the Ottawa jerseys? A quick review. I think it's exactly what we expected from the team, given when the T-shirts came out that had the silver. We know we were getting a silver. And that's a little bit of a culture shock for people. Like the Sens have never worn silver. They've been a gold, red, and black team. So to throw on silver like that, I think it shocked a lot of people. The Senators' cup things, that is a little weird. Uh, I never really thought of it in terms of the longest Stanley Cup drought. But, uh, you know, I I think that they did pretty well given what we were expecting. And I think that going forward, we're going to see this O logo a lot more from the Sens. So if if you don't like this jersey, just throw some gold on it where the silver is now. And if you like that... You're probably going to like what Ottawa has planned for the future. Ben, what do you think of the Ottawa jersey? I don't like this one at all. I gave it a D on my grading scale. Uh, I think Adidas took the the idea of the sense best look and then stripped it of all the excitement. What really made that old throwback they had, that black one with the white and red stripes, uh, was that it was the old school style of stripes that went all over the sweater. Um, this one, they just kept it to a chest stripe. Um, again, silver's on there for no reason, and that collar just looks absolutely ridiculous. The collar is a talking point, definitely. Adidas continues to just mess with the classic hockey jersey. Who knew that a collar could cause so much havoc? Justin, what do you see from uh, the Ottawa jersey? A quick review. Yeah, I think in a jersey in and of itself, it's not super exciting, but I think the sign of things to come is really where it drives home and gets me kind of pumped up for what we're seeing in the future. I think Ottawa sat dormant on their jerseys this year because there is something in the pipeline, and they're really pushing that O logo on there on their home ice, on their Hockey Fights Cancer jersey. So I think for Ottawa fans, this is something to be excited about and maybe a, a precursor to the Barber Bowl coming back in the near future. So, Justin, something that you would keep about the jersey and then the biggest thing that you'd get rid of about the jersey. Yeah, I mean, as much as Ben talked about how he hates the color on this one, I like it. I mean, I think it's something new. So I think this is the perfect time for Adidas to try and, I guess, idiot test their, their new color design and see if they can kind of get something out of it rather than backlash they've heard and maybe they're trying something new and maybe we'll see something different in the future sean something you'd keep something you get rid of i'd keep the striping pattern the way it is right now i would not have made the o as silver as it is i would have put a nice crisp silver outline around it but that it should have been black like i feel like you make that O not blend into the white on the chest stripe and you've got a pretty decent jersey but with it it's going to polarize people yeah that O definitely should have been should have been black but again who you know, as we've been talking about, what may be coming down the pipeline is a red alternate with a with a black O logo. Ben, something you like about the jersey and something you would uh, definitely change? Uh, I do like that O logo. I think it works for them. I think it's something that they can use in the future. Um, we know a rebrand is coming up in the next year or two. I mean, the team has said that. Um, again, I think what kills us the most is the silver. I, I don't understand why it's there. You can't just throw a color on and expect it to work. Um, it, it blends in too much with the white, especially from a distance. Uh, it, yeah, that silver really pulls it down. Yeah, and it's not like the 100th anniversary is the silver anniversary either. 25th anniversary is the silver anniversary. 100th anniversary is actually um, diamond anniversary, but it's not like they can make the jersey out of diamonds. So, uh, overall... I think, I think uh, Nike's going to try that for the next Olympics. There, you go. there we go. Nothing is out Expand of... Expand that little Nike swoosh to the whole jersey. Yeah. Nothing's out of <laughs> the just... realm of possibility with Nike. Just tank tops. Tank tops in Beijing. <laughs> Throw so, up there in basketball jerseys. Why not? <laughs> so, an overall grade uh, from what we've seen for this NHL 100 Classic. We're talking event logo. We're talking team logos, team jerseys. Just overall excitement for this uh, event uh, on your own grading scale. Sean, what do you give this event so far? Event name gets a D. It should be the Centennial Classic 2 Electric Boogaloo. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The the, the logo itself is beautiful. 
Uh, I think we can all agree on that. It's it's like the Centennial Classic logo, but they added red to it. It looks great. I'm not a fan, uh, actually. Itself, you don't a, like it? I'm not a fan of the event logo. I think it's a little plain when compared to the Stadium Series logos and the Winter Classic logos. But go on, continue. The the event itself, I think, for Canadian hockey fans is very exciting. For American hockey fans, I think uh, most of them will say cool and then wait for the Winter Classic. Uh, the jerseys themselves, I'd give Ottawa a B, Montreal an A. The logos, Ottawa gets a C, and Montreal, I will give an A. Ben, just a, a grading of, of this event as a whole. Uh, the event as a whole, um, I think I'll split the difference in my jersey ratings and give this a D+. Plus. Um, as a fan of an original six team who's sick of watching their team in outdoor games, I think I'm sick of outdoor games as a whole. Uh, just go back inside. I mean... Fair enough. Yeah. Like it, it happens a lot, and and that's what's happening with some of these games. It's not so much a, a national event anymore. It's a, a local event, and they're drawing. They're, they definitely draw a bigger number on TV, but not a substantially bigger number that was initially hoped for, ten years ago when they started them. Justin, uh, overall grade for this event. Yeah, I think it's just a C plus all around. I mean, the name is definitely not something to be desired. The the jerseys really don't give anything that really lasts for me. Like, I look at them and I say, okay, those are the 100 Classic jerseys. All right, what's next? I'm looking forward to the Stadium Series stuff, the Winter Classic stuff. And I think those are the two big marquee outdoor games. So I think throwing this third one on there, especially when you had essentially the same thing last year, I don't think it really does a lot from an event standpoint. Yeah, I don't think they've done enough for this game or for their um, centennial celebrations at all. If you look at the 75th anniversary of the league, all the original six teams wore throwback jerseys. I think that was for the first half of the year. And then for the second half of the year, teams wore dark jerseys at home where, as a kind of throwback to how it was. And that was at the time when teams were wearing white jerseys at home normally. So just as a whole, NHL's 100th celebration has been kind of lackluster. These jerseys, I'm not a fan of either team, so I'm not a good voice on this, but... I'm not terribly excited by either jersey, and I just really couldn't care about the event. For instance, here in Canada, on boxes of uh, Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese, there's a chance to win tickets to the game, and I have no interest in winning tickets to the game. So I've just thrown all my boxes of macaroni and cheese in the garbage. <laughs> I might have thrown a winner in the garbage. Who knows? Um, anyways, let's move on to the Stadium Series logos, which we did see revealed about a week ago now. But uh, we're able to get to them now on the podcast. Toronto, Washington, uh, just looking at the team logos and the event logos. Sean, what do you make of these? I think I, I think the event logo is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's no doubt about that. In the last few stadium series, once they dropped that beer logo looking look that they were going for a couple seasons ago with the Minnesota and Colorado games, they've been on fire with these logos. I think this is arguably the best one yet. It's, but it's it, it's no doubt it's one of the best. The Leafs logo, I mean, I, we're we're probably going to get a white version of the Centennial Classic jerseys. I think I'm fine with that. I think most Leafs fans will be fine with that. But we're not getting anything special. But why tinker with something that's near perfect? The Caps, on the other hand, I mean, we all give the Sens and Bolts shit for you know wearing those jerseys with the nicknames on them ten years ago, and now. Washington wants to come late to the party. No, like I mean, this is the team that has the Weagle as a logo, and they can't put it. They can't just slap it on the front of a blue jersey or something. They can't give Caps fans what they want. They have to shorten the name to it and put it on whatever they're going to put it on. It seems like the Stadium Series game would have been uh, an ideal opportunity to use the Weagle logo, but it doesn't appear that the NHL. Or the Washington Capitals are interested in using it as a primary. Ben, uh, your thoughts on the Stadium Series logo and each team logo? Yeah, as for each team, I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about here. Maple Leafs, basically what they have now. Caps, they just shortened the name and kept the stars over it. But what I really like is that event logo. Um, I'm a big fan of it. On the past, we've seen a lot more generic looks. You know, maybe a snippet of the venue and then some sort of generic winter symbol. But the, you know, this one, I think the designers really took a uh, look at the precedence here. What, you know, what makes uh, Annapolis unique, 
and I like how all the elements fit together. It's like a, a well put together puzzle. And uh, I think the only criticism I have for it is that gradient. Um, I I don't think it adds anything to it, and I think it just detracts from the simplicity of it. Justin, your thoughts on the logo package that we saw? Yeah, pretty much what we've heard. I mean, the, the event logo is glorious. It really kind of makes up for what the 100 Classic is kind of lacking on, and it's really well put together and clean. Leafs logo, again, is just kind of their logo. One thing I'm really interested by is the fact that it's white and the fact that they've only worn the white logo on blue jerseys in the past. Even the even the Centennial Classic last year that had a big white chest stripe had the white logo. So I'm wondering if we might see a color on color like we did in the, the Leafs Red Wings Winter Classic. And then Caps logo is just a slap in the face. I mean, I'm a Pens fan, so I like to not be able to like Caps logo. So in that, it kind of makes me happy. But like Sean said, when you got the Weagle, like you're at this stadium series, which is the opportunity to put a modern design forward, and you've got that perfect logo for it. And then you just go out here and pull an Internet Explorer by putting your putting your nickname on there ten years after everyone else has, and it's just it's 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 like a child designed it. Honestly, it's it's sad. And you mentioned the color on color game, which I think is a very good possibility, just based on. Lou Lamorello and what he did when his New Jersey Devils were in the stadium series game where he just said, no, I'm not going with your futuristic designs. We're wearing our retros and there's nothing you can do. I feel he's going to do something similar with the Leafs. He's bent a little bit by uh, coming, allowing the team to come up with a new design for the Centennial Classic, but I don't think he's interested in seeing the team come up with another Jersey design. So I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they go with exactly the stadium series jersey and washington comes up with uh, a red jersey and we have a blue on red game ben what do you what do you think about that a blue versus red game yeah i'd be down for that um you know especially uh annapolis sort of that navy theme you know red white and blue i think that would work really well here sean I, I I always like the thought of a really nice white jersey coming out because I think white jerseys get the short end of the stick in the jersey community and that they stain easily. But when they are when they're good, they're good. On the other hand, yeah, we don't get many color on color games, and stadium series tends to be the place to do it. So I am looking forward to this. But on the on the flip side, it'd be nice to see the Caps do blue for the first time since two thousand. Yeah, excellent. I I, I I totally agree with you guys. I think the the event logo is just fantastic uh even the anchor at the bottom of the logo which could come off a little kind of clip arty doesn't come off clip arty at all totally fits the logo it's a really well put together logo and it's a basic font too but they've made it work which is really fantastic looking forward to seeing that on the jerseys it's actually a strong enough logo that i would consider picking up a patch just to have in the collection even if i didn't have one of the stadium series jerseys So it's a really strong package there. Interested uh, to see what jerseys they come up with. A complete contrast from the NHL 100 Classic where I kind of shrug at the jerseys where I'm really interested to see what the Stadium Series has. Um, So earlier today I interviewed Jeff from Athletic Knit and uh, this is a great chance for you guys to have a listen to that right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the HJC Podcast. I'm here with Jeff, and he works at Athletic Knit. How are you doing today, Jeff? Not too bad. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for uh, asking me to come on. Yeah, I'll, I know you, you're going to have a lot of interesting stuff to say that I know our listeners are really going to enjoy. So you work at Athletic Knit. Of course, they make uh, uniforms and jerseys for all sorts of sports, but we're hockey-focused here. Why don't you give us a, a brief overview of exactly what you do there? All righty. Well, um, I've been there about 12 and a half years. Wow. So <laughs> it's been yeah, a little while. Um, when I started there, essentially, it was at the beginning of their sublimation, I guess, program. Okay. So when I started, it was essentially just me and one other person. Wow. <laughs> um, how big yeah, is how, so. so you're in the design department, correct? Yes. And how big is that department now? Uh, actually, now it's 14 people. Wow, that's good. Oh yeah, we've we've grown quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what do you specifically oversee in the design department? Uh, essentially, uh, what I do is I kind of help oversee um, production to a certain degree. But we do have somebody. I do have somebody in the department that kind of more 
oversees the production aspect of it, but I still kind of have a little bit of a hand in that. Um, pretty much what I do is I deal with the majority of new designs that we put into the uh, our catalogs for all the different sports. Okay. Um, and also, too, usually when it comes down to the uh, theme nights and stuff like ECHL stuff or USHL stuff, um, either I'm the person that do it, that does it, or I kind of oversee who's going to do it, and I work with them uh, to get the design done and out the door. Cool. So ECHL, they have um, their superhero nights going on this year. Was that a big deal for you guys? or? Well, actually, for me, it was... Um, a big deal in the sense that we didn't actually get to do those ones because oh no um i think marvel i don't we're still trying to look into it but i think marvel had um an agreement either with the league or with another manufacturer ot okay so we're we're kind of trying to look into it to see why we weren't allowed to do it Mm -hmm. is Um, is there a partnership in place between echl and ak oh well we are an official supplier of Okay. Uh, jerseys for the ECHL, so yeah, we do, like essentially we're officially tied to them. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so when do teams mostly come to you with an idea, or do you guys ever approach teams with an idea? How does that process usually work? Um, usually they'll come to us. Um, over the years, it's actually become a uh, an easier and easier process where. In the past, it was I think it was a little bit of like last minute planning on some cases for the team's part. But this uh, over the past few years, I guess teams in their marketing department kind of get things together over the summer. So next thing you know, they're coming to us and saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this many theme nights. These are what they are. These are the dates. You know, okay. some of them, they might have ideas and some of them, they might tell us, hey, you know what? <laughs> Here's the theme. Go nuts. Right. Right. So uh, we can see. Some teams, like you mentioned, they come up with last-minute ideas. What's the quickest turnaround time you've ever had to deal with (laughs) design-wise? There's been a couple where from essentially initial design to completion, I think, was just over a week. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, so it was one of those things. And it was a few years ago, so teams have gotten much better. But it was one of those things when, you know, a team kind of came and said, yeah, we really need this. Can you please do it? And it was like, okay, yeah, we can do it. When do you need them? And it's right. like, oh, we need them, you know, in essentially just under two weeks. It's like, <laughs> oh, so that pretty much got us, uh, got me cracking there on uh, some designs, get them out. The team uh, okayed it pretty quick, and then we got it out the door really fast. So, but we try not to do that. We try to kind of, you know, give ourselves a little leeway. Plus, it also, you know, gives the team some time to, uh, you know, look over some designs, make some revisions if they want, as opposed to kind of like, you know, rushing for something. Yeah, absolutely. So, we always hear rumors um, Reebok last year and Adidas that they re- like to have almost a full year to get designs in, review them, make adjustments. Ideally for you guys at Athletic Knit, what's the time frame like that you would, uh, on, if you were working on your own time, uh, get a design in, work on it, and get it back to the team? Um, well, what we try to do is I'll usually try in under a week. Like essentially, once we get a design in, I like to get it as fast as possible. So sometimes I can get something, and if an idea hits really fast, can turn it around the same day. Okay. Um, sometimes if it's also, you know, we're really busy with other stuff, it might take a few days, you know, to look up some reference depending on what they want. Um, and, you know, just to send it out. But I, we pretty much try to make it where, you know, there's a maximum of like five business days Okay. that it, that it takes us to do a custom design just so you don't have a team waiting for, you know, an extended period of time and say, oh, okay, where's our design? Right, right. And you guys like to receive most of your designs or ideas during the summer and that way it gives you enough uh advanced warning to get everything out if possible yeah like what's what's good about it now is because there are some teams that are really early and some teams that are you know a little bit close to the beginning of the season because so it spreads it out for us so it's kind of like so you're not getting you know 40 design requests all at the same time so you're gonna get you know three or four from this team okay great we can work on those get them out the door and then another team comes and another team comes so it's it's pretty much now it actually works out pretty good because it's kind of spaced out so it kind of gets you 
some time to like work on one team, get it out, and then go on to the next. Okay, cool. Um, if there was, it doesn't have to be an ECHL team, but if there was a team uh, whose brand you really enjoy working with, can you pinpoint one team or maybe a handful of teams that uh, you really enjoy working with? Oh, geez. Well, obviously, I'd like to, if I could, I'd love to work for the hometown team there, the Leafs. Yeah. But I know with the whole, you know, contract and stuff like that with Adidas, that's pretty much impossible, <laughs> at least on ice is impossible. So, right. but, um, oh, geez, like one team that I have worked for that's really cool and I'd love to keep kind of doing stuff for is we've done a few things actually for the LA Kings. Oh, cool. What kind of stuff? Um, all off ice, obviously, but, yep. um, essentially we did, uh, it started actually a few years ago with the, uh, ugly Christmas sweater that we did for the Reading Royals. Right. Yep. And we did that for them. And then I believe at the time the LA Kings were their affiliate. Yep. And they essentially got in contact with us and were like, hey, can we get some of these? And oh, I was like, sweet. Sure. So I guess what it ended up uh, happening is we did them for them, sent them out to them. And I guess it was around Christmas that they had it as uh, like auctioned off uh, signed jerseys before one of their games. Well, that's pretty neat. Something to hang your hat on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then the ma- the one thing I did see the mascot ward on the ice, so it's like excellent. Well, that's, that's pretty awesome. Some of your work showed up on NHL ice, so that's cool. Oh yeah, exactly. And seen yeah, so it's like seen a couple pictures and saw Bailey wearing it, and I'm like, oh right, great. Well, at yeah. least I can say uh, you know it was on the ice in an NHL game. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm, you don't have to name any teams, but can you recall a design that was probably your most challenging? Oh geez, well. <laughs> There is a team, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad thing, um, that I really like to do work for, and uh, it's actually the Reading Royals. We do a lot of stuff for them, and I love working with them. And the, the whole thing with them, and I guess the challenging part, is every year it's like, okay, we got to do something different, and we got to do it better than last year. Right. So that, to me, it's always kind of a bit challenging because, you know, every year you'll try and push out something pretty awesome and then you do it and then it's like okay next year we got to do better than last year Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know that pretty much that's a team there but again i find that is a really you know great thing so that's one of the teams that uh i really enjoy working with because they're pretty much you know here's the theme night you know come up with something so they pretty much give uh free reign with it too so it's pretty much all up to me or one of the other designers I have working on stuff to come up with something. So it's kind of like, that's the challenge there is, okay, we got to outdo last year. Right. Right. Now when a team does uh, leave the design up to your team of designers, um, do they, do most teams usually accept your, your first idea or do you usually have to go back and forth a bit? Um, Sometimes we go back and forth a little bit, but I'd say the vast majority uh, we'll usually go for the first uh, concept, or if we have, let's just say, sometimes we'll have two or three ideas, depending on, you know, if I come up with something, or if it's a matter of, hey, we have two or three good designs coming from the designers in the department, we'll send them three ideas and be like, here, here's three options, see what you think, and they usually do end up picking something there. A lot of the revisions that we end up doing for those usually require, like, oh, can you now put the sponsor on it or we have a new sponsor or can you put a couple of things on it like that? Not necessarily, you know, can you please come up with something completely different? Right. Okay, cool. Um, well, that that was awesome. We really appreciate you taking time, Jeff. A lot of good information. One last question I did want to get in. Uh, sure. Yeah, as a professional designer, uh, just for people listening, uh, mainly what programs you use to do your work? Uh, essentially I'd say 99% of my stuff is Adobe Illustrator. Okay. Uh, do a little bit of work in Photoshop, but pretty much Illustrator's the, uh, bread and butter, uh, program there just due to the fact of with vector graphics and stuff for either, uh, recreating it with screen print, with sublimation or with, um, embroidery. It seems to be the most compatible with those two. So it's kind of like. If you are going to design something, if you use Adobe Illustrator, whatever you come up with, it'll translate easier to, you know, actual manufacturing. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's uh, that's perfect. Thanks for taking time for us, Jeff, and uh, take care. No problem. Thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. That was the interview that I did with Jeff earlier today from Athletic Knit. It was good stuff. I uh, really appreciate Jeff giving us the time. We're now going to go to our new segment here called Throwback Throwdown. We started this last week. And considering tonight, Saturday, the Dallas Stars play the Edmonton Oilers, we'd figure we'd do throwback jerseys for those two teams. So the head-to-head matchup today is the Edmonton Oilers Steel Drop logo jersey against the Dallas Stars Mooderous jersey. Everyone's going to have about 10 or ten or 15 seconds to give us a review of each jersey, and then we're each going to pick a winner, and we'll see where uh, which jersey wins this throwback throwdown. And joining us for this segment is friend of the show, Brendan. How's it going, Brendan? It's going good, Ryan. How are you? Excellent, excellent. All right, why don't we, uh, Brendan, why don't you start us off a uh, re- quick review of the Edmonton Oilers Steel Drop logo jersey. Now, personally, I've never understood why it got as much hate as it did. Sure, it's a lot different than their brand normally was, but I think that's exactly what you want in an alternate jersey. And I think that it was modern without being too modern to the point that it was gaudy. And I think it worked pretty well. I've always been a fan of it. So, Sean, your review? Pure and utter nostalgia. For those who can't see, I'm holding up a copy of NHL 2004 for the GameCube, and that's about all you need to know about how much I love that jersey. (laughs) Ben? Uh, Not a big fan of this one. I I like the idea of what they were doing with the logo. Uh, As a Detroit fan, I can can say, you know, how uh, industry can be a source of pride for a place. So, you know, combining both the oil and the steel, I think, works. Uh, I think the jersey is just a little too plain to work as an alternate. I don't like how they removed orange from the set. And Justin. Yeah, I'm a big fan of seeing numbers go in different places in the upper arm. So I think throwing those in the stripes is a really nice look. And I will say growing up and having this jersey as a kid, I always looked at it as a, as a comet. Not until I got older that I noticed the oil drop. So I was always really confused seeing this jersey in, in, in real life. But like looking back on it now, it is some of that nostalgia. And it's, it's, it's stood the test of time for more or less. Excellent. Good stuff. All right. Now its opponent is the Dallas Stars Mooderous jersey. This one will be interesting. Brendan, why don't you start us off with your review of this uh, jersey? (laughs) Now, similarly, I think it's a bit of a departure from the Stars brand, and I like that. And I actually think the red worked out half decently. I don't think it's something that should have stayed with the Stars brand, which it didn't, which I think is good. But I never really hated this jersey, aside from the obvious uh, thing about the logo. Other than that, I never really thought it was that bad. And even the logo itself was a good idea. It just happened to align with, uh, you know, a uterus. (laughs) Sean? This is a jersey I don't even remember existing. I it, it seemed to just come and go, and by the time I had heard of it, I thought it, at first I thought it was the worst thing in the world, and then a friend of mine got one, and I looked at it and I thought, this is gorgeous, until I looked at the logo. And I'm not against the Stars trying a Bull logo, but if you just slap a regular Stars logo on that, you got one of the better alternates for the 2005-06 season. Ben? Uh, you know, there's the obvious... Uh, connection to human anatomy there but I think people are always going to try to look for connections in logo and that doesn't bug me so much what I don't like uh, at all are those colors I, you know red and green are supposed to be complementary but the shades they chose they just seem to clash with each other and um, I don't like that star in the logo as well I think it breaks the balance and it just throws the whole thing off and Justin, this one. Yeah, I mean, growing up in Dallas, this is a jersey that, unlike Sean, I really do remember because I remember like the day it came out. I remember seeing it and thinking, "What the hell is that?" And you know, over time, it's it's kind of I've started to enjoy it. I remember seeing it in the in the stands of Stars games, and I would just get visibly mad at people who would wear it because it wasn't a Stars jersey. But I think over time, you kind of cozy up to it, and you see what they were going for, and you get the stars and the stripes, and you get those kind of those kind of new colors we were talking about that really does forge a new identity in an alternate, which I think is what you're trying to do. All right. Good stuff, guys. It's now time to pick a winner. There's four of you guys here. So if there is a tie, I will break the tie. Brendan, why don't you go first? Who's your winner? 
The Edmonton Oilers oil drop or the Dallas Stars Mooderous? Oilers steel drop. Sean, who's your winner here? If what could have been was the category, I would have picked the Mooderous. There was a lot of potential in that jersey, but we don't play could have been on this show. We play what was, and unfortunately, that logo is just... I'm still going to give it to the Mooders. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> I'm giving it to the Mooders in this one just because I think it gets so much unwarranted hate. It needs a little love. Sean calls an audible and goes with the Mooderous. Ben, who are you going with here? I think I'll go with what's expected and uh, pick Edmonton. And Justin, who are you going with? Yeah, seven-year-old me would hate me for this, but I'm going to have to stick with uh, what I'm wearing right now in the Stars jersey and go with the Mooderous as well. All right, that brings the score to two to two. And now I'm going to have to break this tie. And I can't help myself. I have to go with the Edmonton Oilers steel drop. I really think that's a solid logo, which is not something you can say for the Dallas Stars jersey. So our winner of this throwback throwdown by a tie-breaking vote of 3-2 to two is the Edmonton Oilers Steel Drop logo. All right, that was a good addition of throwback throwdown. we got to get some theme music or some cheering in there, something to add a little <laughs> fanfare. Uh, Brendan, thanks for joining us for this segment. You'll be back uh, for Fake or Authentic later in the show. Yep, thanks for having me. See you later. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to take a few seconds here. To go around the league, we'll all uh, tell uh, you guys, the listeners, how our favorite teams have been doing over the past seven days since you last listened to us. I'll lead us off, as I always do, with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And unfortunately, this isn't a great week for me to review their week because between Saturday and Thursday, they had one game. However, they are riding a five-game win streak without Austin Matthews for the last four games. And their last two games... They seem to have put together the capability to play team defense, which has been a problem all year. And Freddie Anderson has stepped up in Austin Matthews' absence. Uh, So the Leafs have won five in a row, doing quite well. But uh, in Leafland, there's been so much failure that there's this constant fear that the wheels could fall off at any moment. So we're never too comfortable. Sean, why don't you let us know how it's going for the Jets? Absolutely wonderful. It's always nice when your team plays a peewee team and you only let you let them always score one goal to let them feel good about themselves when you could have shut them out 8 nothing, And that's what they did with the Arizona Coyotes. They got their two free wins in. They got a nice comeback win against Philadelphia. That guy on Philadelphia that um, hit uh, Matthew Perot in the back of the head with that stick. Goodis. Goodis, yeah. 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 Um, nice guy. Yeah. He's a shit, but uh, <laughs> he gets suspended. He'll, he, he he got caught. He didn't Chris Simon him, so I guess that's a good thing. But it's nice to have Perot back, and things are looking great. Second in the Central, keep going, and playoffs are in reach. Good stuff. Ben, why don't you tell us how it's going with Detroit? Well, this is always my le- uh, least favorite segment of the show. We're still a 500 team. Can't say it's going well, but I also can't say it's going poorly. Um, you know, if one of our goalies gets hot and uh, take advantage of a long homestand later this month that they could get into the playoff race. Unfortunately, that's probably not the case, and it's looking more like a rebuild squad. The big story right now, the kids are all right. Athanasiu is back after uh, that whole offseason fiasco. Uh, he's shaking off the rust for six points in uh, ten games. Dylan Larkin and Anthony Mantha are having monster seasons. They have 19 points in 20 games. All three of them had a three-point game in an 8-2 route over the Calgary Flames. So the future is bright, but uh, the present, not so much. What did you think of that brawl during the commercial break against the Flames? Uh, I'm a college hockey fan, so I think I'm uh, obligated to say I don't like fighting in hockey. <laughs> Fair enough, and it's, it's, it's disappearing. You know what? I'm, I'm with you. If I go to a game and there's a fight, I can't help myself. i got to stand up. It's, it, it's exciting to see. But at the same time... Uh, I, I'm a father of two kids and I can't logically sit there and tell my children that if someone does something that you don't like, you should go fight them. So uh, I enjoy watching fighting in hockey, but yeah, it's it's slowly phasing itself out of the game. But uh, there may always be those brawls as long as there's tension. Justin, this... Now, Ryan, you think of every time Darcy Tucker, Ty Domi, <laughs> Wendell Clark, and all those guys dropped the gloves, and you were up there cheering and cheering and cheering. I was, yes. 
<laughs> yes. As was I. As was I. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. The only difference is that I still enjoy a good fight. Who doesn't? I'm a father, though. And Darcy Tucker was my favorite leaf. If there's so. if there's someone fighting, whether it's hockey or you're driving down the road, you're going to stop and look. That's just. I think it might just be human nature, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, it, 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 there seems to be no place for it in hockey at at this time, and and that's the way it seems to be trending. Uh, Justin, this week we don't have any Penguins fans on the podcast. We don't. So we you don't. get to review, me though. You get to review the Penguins. Yeah, it's it's a it's a new territory for me. <laughs> um, but it's this year the Penguins are a fun team to watch as long as it's not the second game of a back to back. I mean they've had. Six of them now, and they have 13 more to go, which is outrageous. And I think this NHL schedule is just silly with this mandatory bye week, but they're not willing to take time off for the Olympics. But that's a whole other issue. But I think this past week the Penguins have really shown what they can do. Matt Murray had an absolutely fabulous game last night against Ottawa and just really stood on his head and made a highlight real save against Hoffman. Crosby is, is back in the scoring column uh, on Tuesday against Buffalo, so that's not something you ever – you ever really hope to see or ever expect to see Crosby go into a drought, but him and Sherry went off, and so it's good to see him kind of coming back into the fold and Murray back in back into shape. He's got a good record, but his stats are a little bit slumping. But I think I think he's getting in the groove, and I think hopefully we'll see good things from him going forward. Nothing like a game against Buffalo to get Sidney Crosby going again. It's the same thing <laughs> happened last year. He had that goal of the year with the I think it was the one handed backhand right over uh, Robin Lehner's glove. So. That's yeah. pretty good. Um, since releasing Nemi, I don't know if you've been uh, – sorry, since releasing Niemi and six other teams picking him up, I don't know if you've been following the uh, backup goalie story and how well that's been going or do they still need help in that position? Yeah, I mean, ideally, Jari would have been kept in the AHL getting top minutes. I think he – even with Niemi, he was their second best goalie, so I think he'll do fine. Right now he's played two games and – has gotten two points. They've lost in overtime in both games, but if you can get a point from your backup, especially someone you expected to be in your AHL all year, I think I think you can be happy with that, at least for now. I mean, I think he has the skill. We were just hoping we could develop him for a little longer, but if he's got to play, he's got to play. So I think I like what we're seeing from him this far, but we'll see how it goes. It may be possible that Pittsburgh picks someone up closer to the, closer to the deadline if someone becomes available. Yeah. So we'll Definitely. see that. That was Around the League. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. And coming up next, we will be bringing Brendan back in for Fake or Authentic. Okay, we're back with Fake or Authentic. And as I said, joining us back for this segment, friend of the show, Brendan. Welcome back, Brendan. Thank you for me back, Ryan. Absolutely. Well, we needed we had an empty seat, so we needed that filled. And you're a friend of the show, so we call you. You mean an empty fence? <laughs> graduate up to the seat we'll get there someday here we go fake or authentic let's start in montreal montreal's nhl 100 jersey will outsell ottawa's nhl 100 jersey sean what do you think fake and not because montreal's fans won't buy this jersey it's just that uh, ottawa fans that want an adidas jersey will be forced to pick this up as the other two are dumpster shit Dumpsters. Best kind. <laughs> ben, fake or authentic? Montreal's NHL 100 jersey. Authentic. I don't think either of these jerseys are going to sell well, but Montreal being the uh, original six team and French Canada's team, I think they're just going to have more fans. Um, I, yes, I think if like if each team's fan, 1% of each team's fan base buys it, then you know Montreal will be the uh, winner here. They didn't used to be French Canada's team. When the Quebec Nordiques were around, that was French Canada's team and the Habs were viewed as, oh, English Canada, get out of here, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, But uh, let's go to Justin, fake or authentic on this statement? Yeah, uh, by numbers game, probably authentic, but by percentages, I would say Ottawa. I think there's just more Ottawa fans that are going to have that nostalgia and kind of that desire to get a barber pole jersey, and this is the closest thing they're going to get from Adidas. Like, like Sean was saying, their other two jerseys are – a couple steps from decent, so I think this is kind of the way to go if you're an Ottawa fan at the moment. Brendan, fake or authentic? I'm going to say fake because Ottawa fans are nuts about the Heritage look from what I've heard. And this, I mean, this isn't exactly the Heritage look, but it's fairly close. And uh, 
like Sean said, their uh, new Adidas jerseys are uh, dumpster shit. So I think that the Ottawa fans are going to go more nuts over this jersey than they will over Montreal, which is different, but still more similar to their current design than Ottawa is. I'm interested to see if Montreal's fans kind of revolt because it's a new design. They're very much into their their classic-looking jersey, so it'll be interesting there. Fake or authentic, it will be too warm on March 3rd for the Stadium Series game, and the ice will be shit, just like the 2011 Winter Classic in Pittsburgh. Sean, fake or authentic? Authentic, but it won't be that bad. I was watching that game, and let me tell you, that ice, (laughs) that wasn't ice, that was slush. Uh, it, March March is too, especially in like Maryland. That's not. I mean, why are you waiting until March for an outdoor game that you're not going to put in Minnesota? Money. The answer is always money. Well, that's true. <laughs> the answer is always money. Ben, fake or authentic? It's going to be too warm. I'm thinking with authentic, but maybe not because of uh, temperature. I, I think March third. You're not. You're not really sure what you're going to get. Uh, Maybe it'll rain, maybe it'll be sunny, you know, maybe it'll be under 32, but uh, I think it's just uh, too many variables for the ice crew to have a uh, just perfect indoor quality ice. Justin? I'll say authentic. I mean, I think outdoor games are meant for that kind of January 1st, late December atmosphere. I I had the privilege of going to the... uh, the Leafs Detroit game in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. That was fantastic. You had the snowfall. You had the like twelve degree weather. It was the right atmosphere. I think waiting till March third is just silly, and it is like Ben said, just kind of a money grab at this point. Brendan, fake or authentic? Fake, because since twenty eleven, the NHL has played outdoor games in Colorado, where apparently it was in the low seventies on the day of the game. And in California, where the high was 70 in the low 70s and the low was in the upper 50s for on the day of the game. So even if it is warm out, I think at this point they have the technology where they can combat the fact that the ice is, uh, or combat the fact that the ice would melt. Unless the ice was also shit in those games, which I don't really remember. But uh, I'm going to say fake. Right now, millennial Canadians are sitting around trying to figure out this Fahrenheit stuff, and it's just blowing their mind. (laughs) We speak American on this podcast, don't you know? (laughs) There is an exchange rate with that. Don't forget that. All right, fake or authentic, the Toronto Arena's jersey will be the best-selling NHL specialty jersey this season. Sean. Fake if Buffalo's jersey is what it looks like it's going to be, which is the royal blue white jersey with the classic. Like, if that's the case, Buffalo will literally go nuts. If that's not the case, though, and we get a script jersey, oh, for sure. That is a beautiful jersey. The, the inline stitching is absolutely wonderful. Would totally recommend you buy one if you have $275 laying around to get a customized one. Yeah, I, it's all circumstantial, but I'm going to say authentic because I don't think Buffalo's jersey is going to be that classic jersey that Buffalo has wanted for 22 years. It never is. They're always left wanting. Ben, fake or authentic? I'll go with fake. I think either Buffalo, New York, or maybe both of them, those two teams, I think they're going to sell well. Um, from what I can tell so far, I think those uh, the hats released have had the striping patterns on them and it's usually what we see on the jerseys and it looks like they're going back to something more traditional uh something that sells better um i know detroit and toronto the uh ann arbor game i think that was 2014 um those did really well and i think we're going to see something similar to that justin faker authentic the arena's jersey will be the best-selling specialty jersey I say fake. I think it quite possibly will be the best specialty jersey, but I think just by the fact that it's for a very low-profile game outside of Toronto where it's just kind of a regular game and not like a Winter Classic, a stadium series, something like that, I think best-selling is, is a far cry. And I think, as, as Jets was saying, if you pull something that out of Buffalo, things going to sell like hotcakes to those fans out there. And Brendan, fake or authentic? I'm going to say fake because if you pair the fact that Buffalo looks – very, very likely to be returning to Royal Blue for the Winter Classic. I'm pretty sure Buffalo fans are going to eat that up because even though it may not be the classic design, it's still Royal Blue compared to the Navy Blue. And um, along with what Justin said about the fact that Toronto is not wearing that for a very high-profile game at all. I agree that I think it probably looks to be the best 
of the specialty jerseys, but probably not the best selling. And for anybody looking to go that uh, Toronto Maple Leafs Carolina Hurricanes game that starts at 2 p.m. during the middle of the week, uh, there are standing room tickets available right now for $195 a piece. So be sure to get on those quickly. Um, I like Dallas Stars hockey. It's 20 bucks for a good seat. It's fantastic. There you go. <laughs> for those of you in business suits at the Leafs games who would like to buy one of those jerseys to never wear, yeah, but you can send sure. them our way. We'll we'll totally pr- yeah, we'll really? twenty bucks for. We'll them. take. We'll send them to a good home here at Jersey's for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fake or authentic? We will see the Winter Classic jerseys before Black Friday, which is next Friday. Sean, fake or authentic? The hell is Black Friday? Um, <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm gonna say fake because Adidas has been pretty good with this whole not leaking shit uh, game now. They have two games to mess this up. But we have an idea what we're getting with the the game. I think that we're going to get it like December 1st or something along those lines. Usually by now we do have at least one of the jerseys. But with this year being a game where Chicago is not involved and two of the jerseys will actually be viable for a fan who doesn't have no jerseys, I think, you know, we'll add fake. (laughs) Ben? Yeah, I'll say fake as well. I... Uh, yeah, Adidas has done pretty well keeping these under wraps, and you know Black Friday is just a week away, so you know you just go I think based on sheer probability, um, it's just a short amount of time. So fake. Justin, I'll say authentic on this one. I've been looking at Adidas hockey Twitter for a, for the past little while to try and ju- try and pick up on this stuff, and they kind of dropped the. Uh, the uh, 100 Classic stuff on us pretty quickly. I think they only released that they were going to release it like two or three days before they actually came out with it. So I think we could see something similar. And on a lot of their responses to those jerseys, people were asking when the when the uh, Winter Classics ones were coming out. And they kept responding soon, just keep your eyes open. So I think the, they'll stay true to their word and we'll see them sooner rather than later. Brendan, fake or authentic? Are we going to see these before Black Friday? I'm going to say authentic in the sense that I'm sure they want to capitalize on the Black Friday sales. But considering they have kept it well under wraps, if they do or if they do have it in the plans to wait till after Black Friday, I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it'll be interesting. They definitely, it just seems like an appropriate time to get them out. And we, we only got maybe 24 or 48 hours notice for the NHL. 100 jerseys as we mentioned so it'll be uh, certainly interesting to see when they come out our last question let's go back to montreal and their new backup goaltender anti niemi fake or authentic anti niemi will play for four nhl teams this season sean fake or authentic 100 percent authentic because there are several teams in the league namely buffalo carolina and phoenix that are dumb enough to take him after this and i like anti miami i think he was a great goalie in chicago a good goalie in dallas but he is done and the fact that he has ended up on a team that has two and a half young goalies sitting in the ahl and east coast league and he still has a job Montoya will come back, Price will come back, and Lindgren will probably go back to the AHL. That will leave him released. Now, at that point, after Arizona has worn out Michael Layton, which is what will happen, I think, we are going to see Anti Miami's go to Arizona, start the last 50 games or so of the season, get them to the playoffs, and lose in the conference finals. Well, you live in a magical world there, Sean. Very interesting. <laughs> And when I turn off my PS4, I will tell you. <laughs> ben, fake or authentic? I have to go with fake. I think at some point teams are going to start looking to their AHL clubs. Uh, you know, who's done the best job there? Who deserves uh, a call up? And I think we're going to see teams uh, go in house before they go out to someone who's uh, proven themselves uh, incapable of goaltending. <laughs> Justin? I'm going to say fake by virtue of the fact that Mark Bergevin is only the GM of one NHL team. I think <laughs> after after he failed in Pittsburgh and now he failed in Florida pretty much and has come up to pick up table scraps in Montreal and as we were talking about earlier, wouldn't even get a game shot against Arizona. I think he's kind of reached the end of his rope here. I think he might 
go to another team, I don't know if we'll see NHL action again this season. Brendan, Antti Niemi, four NHL teams this year? Well, if we are ba- being specifically that he has to play a game, then I say authentic if he plays a game for Montreal. Fake if he doesn't. But just being on the roster of four different teams, I say authentic because assuming that Montreal lets him go, which is probably likely at some point, there's probably going to be somebody desperate enough to pick him up or just pick him up and be like, hey, go to the AHL team or something like that. Whether or not he decides to do it, who knows. But I think somebody is going to pick him up and say, uh, send him on waivers. Now another uh, way to look at it is maybe after Montreal releases him, he goes back home, plays in Finland, and we see him in February at the Olympics. Who knows? That would be interesting. There you go. Anyways, that was our fake or authentic for this week. Uh, Brendan, thanks for jumping in and joining us and uh, joining us on your couple segments for this podcast. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And now it's time to hit the HJC mailbag. Mailbag. All right, let's uh, open up the HJC mailbag, see what we got inside. Coming up, oh, here's an interesting one from FC Macbeth. What is your favorite 2018 Olympic jersey? You must choose one. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with mm-hmm. uh, Germany. It's the we least, did this last time. <laughs> it's the least offensive of all of them. Interesting, something German is the least offensive. Anyway, Sean, go ahead. Uh, what's your favorite <laughs> Olympic jersey? It's a tie between Norway and Finland. I haven't seen Norway's white jersey. I haven't seen Finland's blue jersey. So depending on that, it'll determine it. But if I had to pick one, I'm going to give it to Norway. I love that Viking boat. And Ben, favorite? uh, You have to choose one favorite Olympic jersey. Well, if I have to, I'll have to go with Sweden. uh, Just because they gave the middle finger to Nike. I didn't try to... uh, didn't try to seem correct. They just uh, went tried and true with the traditional look. And Justin, you got to choose one jersey, favorite Olympic gotta jersey. Got to choose one. All right. Um, I'm going to go with Japan just because they don't really have a history for Nike to mess up. So if they want to try something new, I think that's that's a good place to start and probably a good place to finish as well. But that's neither here nor there. And with that, I'll also mention that all of them look like absolute shit. Thanks for nothing, Nike. Anyways, <laughs> let's go to another question. Reaching deep down in the HJC mailbag, and we pull out this question. No name left on it, so we'll see. Uh, which is or was the worst on jersey abbreviation? Sends, bolts, or caps? And also, this person wants to know which one was the best. Sean, best and worst on jersey abbreviations. Um, best by far was the bolts. I mean, the the jerseys themselves were at worst plain and at best pretty damn good. But it didn't even look that bad, to be honest with you. I mean, what would you prefer to lightning strewn across the jersey, Tampa Bay strewn across the jersey? Uh, the worst. Uh, now, I will say Sens is pretty or Sens is that was a pretty bad jersey. Uh, it, and, and I and, and I mean, it is the Sens, but uh there's also the fact that we haven't seen the cap. I'm going to give it to the caps because at least the Sens jersey, if you put a regular Sens logo on there, it goes from terrible to Senator's good, which is shit. <laughs> ben, uh, worst and best abbreviation jerseys. I'll start with the best. And I think the bolts were the best uh, because they didn't try to shorten the name. I, I guess they shortened it by taking the word lightning off, but, you know, bolts is a full word, so I think I'd have to give to that. Um, worst, I'd have to go with the Sens, um, especially because those jerseys were just so terrible. Justin? I would say, yeah, bolts is definitely the best by far because it's a real standalone thing. Um, caps, as a Pens fan, I just don't like the word of caps ever and just hearing it makes me cringe and i think seeing a logo where at least the other ones they created a new word mark to go with it caps they literally just stole four letters from their name and then scrunched it together so i think that's just the the selling point for me if i if i had to go with something here i would say tampa bay did both the best and worst jersey 
with the yeah with their the black one was nasty yeah the black Although, one was just sean probably awful. thinks something different but <laughs> sean what do you think of the black bolts jersey i don't hate i hated it when it came out i really did it it is it is extremely plain um if it was on sale best. for 60 bucks would you buy it for 60 bucks yeah yeah, I'd buy it for 60 bucks. I'd buy it on, you know, your average Reebok Edge clearance price. I debated buying one at 60 bucks when uh, Pro Hockey Life did their big half-off summer sale. I ended up going with the Oilers orange jersey because why wouldn't you? Yeah, good job. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's just a uh, – it's hard to say whether or not it was a great jersey because there was so much potential with it. They could they have done made so a much better bolt jersey. Arms, they could have made the arms blue. They could have tried something called a striping pattern. Well, they ha- I thought they had it fine with their original alternate. Yeah. And then they just stripped it down and made it black. But they kept the bolts. So they went from worst to best as far as as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we got another question. Last one in the mailbag. There are more in the mailbag, but this is the last one for today. Uh, this has been addressed specifically to me. Because of my hatred for the Montreal Canadiens and the Ottawa Senators. But if I had to choose a team to cheer for in the NHL 100 Classic, who would it be? And uh, this is from Noah B. Thanks, Noah. I, I'll have to say the um, the referees. I really hope no one gets hurt out there. <laughs> I hope it's a nice, clean game, a well-called game. Uh, the guys in the stripes uh, really could do a, a good job. It's going to be on national television. A lot of pressure under them are on them so uh, i really hope the zebras do well as far as uh montreal or ottawa they can go shit in their hats because i don't really care about either of them i'll let you guys answer this question who are you cheering for in the nhl 100 classic justin yeah i mean i've grown up in a family of leafs fans so i kind of have similar ideas on both teams but i i'd say just from seeing Matt Duchesne play in Ottawa now, I think I want to see him do something outdoors. So I'm going to say let's go with uh, Matt Duchesne and the Ottawa Senators. Ben, you got to choose a winner. Who's it going to be? Um, I think my favorite uh, player on the ice is always the goalie. Uh, I love Carey Price for the uh, uh, Habs uh, if he's there. So I'll go with uh, Montreal for this one. Sean, who are you choosing on this one? Oh, by far, Montreal, because as I've said many times before, in growing up in Toronto in the early 2000s, Montreal wasn't a threat. You almost felt bad that this former strong rival that you could have played in the 93 Stanley Cup playoffs was now just this sad mess. And you felt, I felt kind of bad for the Habs. I really did. I really wanted that Leafs-Habs rivalry, and I got like 9-1 spankings on the Leafs' part. But those fucking sends... <laughs> Patrick Laleem, Daniel Alfredson, Radic Bonk, Martin Havlet, all of those guys made that team just so unlikable. And the hatred just now, stays left, with fine. you. Fine. <laughs> now, when they left the team, I, I could get an actual opinion on them, but it's just, I can't help but hate the Sens. Even when they are usually the last team in the playoffs that are Canadian. Yeah. I, I still dislike them i don't go with that whole that's very interesting i don't go with that whole cheer for the canadian team left in the playoffs i i'm just not that type of person i i'll go with um like i like chicago i like uh, pittsburgh those kind of teams so yeah uh, i'm not to, on board with that whole cheer for the canadian team in the playoffs that is was it, is it because it's usually ottawa and montreal because like you know just imagine one year 2011 were you rooting for vancouver and not just because they're facing boston no, not at all. Vancouver was a dirty team that year, and they couldn't even score in the final, yet somehow they made it to Game 7. I was not cheering for Vancouver. However, uh, I didn't know how crazy Tim Thomas was at the time, so I might not have been cheering for Boston either. <laughs> crazy Tim Thomas giving you great car deals. By the way, the fluoride in your water. <laughs> <laughs> and we all thought Tuka Rask was crazy at the time with the axe-swinging stick. Oh, imagine what kind of goalie tandem that would have been in the locker room. Tim Thomas and uh, Tuka Rask. And I heard that Tim Thomas and Andrew Ference used to uh, get into it quite a bit because they have quite opposing political and world views. So that that would have been interesting nice. to be a part of that locker room. Uh, that was the HJC mailbag. Just a reminder, you can leave your questions in the HJC mailbag on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com 
On the right side of the page is a form. Leave your question, leave your name, and it may be answered on an upcoming HJC podcast. That uh, will start to wrap it up for us. I want to remind everyone that you can get your Jersey Casual t-shirts still and your HJC stickers. Go to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. At the top of the page, there's a shop link, and you can pick them up there. The stickers are only $2 Canadian, which is like a buck sixty-five American. Like I said last week, someone will lend you that money. Someone will let you use a credit card to purchase a dollar sixty-five sticker. Go get your sticker and slap it on your boat. Uh, Ask Anthony Yemi for some money. Seriously, <laughs> he makes enough, and he's not really he doing paid it. paid to not play. Yes. He might be spending it all on his travel costs, though. Get him a sticker. Put it on his jersey or somewhere. He Put should, it on his helmet. Yeah, we're going to send one to Anti Niemi and see what he does with it. He doesn't need a white mask anymore. Give him an HJC mask. It's Just perfect. Slap it on there. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, easy. There we go. All right, guys. That's the episode for today. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. Like it on YouTube. It helps spread the word about the HJC podcast. You can also subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Let your friends know about the HJC podcast. Get the word out there. We'd really love to have lots of people listen to it. And if you want to get into the conversation, you can comment on YouTube. You can comment on the blog. Uh, give us some ideas. Give us some feedback for the show. We'd love to hear it. So, uh, Sean... Ben, Justin, and of course we heard earlier from Brendan. Thanks for joining me. And that was the HJC Podcast.